Okay, I wanted to make this into a separate video because it's very theory heavy. It's going to be very info dense. So I want you to be able to easily watch through this a couple of times uh, afterwards if you need to go back to it. Vectors and more complex variable types. In the video where we started the introduction to C sharp scripting, I talked a little bit about floats, ints, bools, and string. I've got a float right here uh, as an example for the speed for our character movement. And those types of variables you'll note have a different color first and foremost from the others here these are light blue this one was dark blue that's because the dark blue variables like float and int and string exist within c sharp itself the light blue ones are the ones that are added through unity or through your own script and those basic variables really only hold one bit of data one number one true false state one whatever when we get into the variable types that unity provides you things get a little bit more complex so let's start with the vector 2 because unlike just having a float if we uh, if we look at our speed and we put in a dot which i talked about this a little bit before when you're referencing a variable and you put it in the dots it's kind of like taking the next step down a staircase giving you access to a new layer of information regarding what you're looking for specifying your funnel down from very broad we're looking for this type of information within this context and then this specific information so in this case if we're just saying speed we're looking within the type float and then there is nothing else in here except a number of functions these functions you can use like to string it makes a string out of it that's all fine and dandy but if instead of speed we go for our direction variable you'll see that we have two variables within that variable so this vector 2 has a x value and a y value inside of it so we can go for direction dot x and we can use specifically the x value from our vector too if you ever want to look into a specific variable type and what might be inside it you can just type it out and then right click and then go to definition it'll take a second to look for where that definition is located but here we see everything we can do with a vector 2 most of this is just different functions that the vector 2 can do but up here we see the actual content the information that it can hold the x value and the y value which both of those are just floats and we know about floats so a vector 2 is nothing more or less than two floats called x and y and then a bunch of functions that we're not going to worry about right now and in much the same way you can make a vector 3 so let's call that a uh, 3 direction something like that and if we go look at the definition for a vector 3 you will see it's got a x a y and a z component and then a bunch of the same functions that exist in vector 2 which again we're not going to go over right now and from there the next thing that i want to talk about is the transform this is a variable type that you will end up using a lot uh, because it references the current position and rotation of any given object so if we just try to write a line of code uh, regarding our transform variable we can see uh, we can get the position out of that and the position i'll tell you right now we'll check in a moment is a vector 3 variable so that position we can break down even more into its individual components that being x y and z and this is the important bit to understand is these dots are just a way to separate the different layers of focusing in on something very broad that being everything to do with the transform no we're actually specifically looking for the position everything else that transform can do very nice we don't care about right now. and maybe we want to go a step deeper than that and we want to specifically know the x position or, or the y position because maybe in a 2d game uh, we want to see how far in the horizontal axis we are from a certain enemy to know if an enemy needs to do a certain type of attack right for that we need to transform position x or y depending on if you want horizontal or vertical so let's real quick go into the definition for transform 
and we can see that indeed in the summary the position is a vector three and we also got a local position which has got to do with parenting which again just like this video i'm going to make a separate quick video about parenting and how that works so do keep up to date for that for now understand that you have these variables within variables that you can access and that doesn't necessarily end with what unity provides you because in the start of this beginner series we've made this text update script we can make variables with that so we can say text update and you see it works as a variable type so let's just call that text in our text update we have a public integer called number so if we go into our text variable and we put in a dot and we look through this list we can find number because it's a publicly available variable so to put this into a more game ready context instead of putting all your variables for your hp and your mp and your defense if you're making an rpg for instance on your character you can make a separate script that you just call something like stats and put those variables in that script then that script can be used as a variable in and of itself on your player but you can also use that for instance on your enemies and your bosses and then from that stats variable you can then get the hp and the mp and the max hp and all the information that you need out of that stats script let's do one more example and then i think you should understand more or less what these vectors and these more complex variable types are all about so let's go for game object another one of the most used variable types you're going to be using um let's just call it geo so if we check geo dot we have a bunch of information about this but the most important thing there being is the thing we just talked about which is transform it has a position it has a rotation it's got a lot of different things inside of it that whole everything about that is just one piece of what a game object is so what we just did with going for our transform and then going into the position and then finding the x we're doing the exact same thing here but instead we need to first reference which game object it is then go one layer deeper into its transform and then from there everything is the same because if we go into the definition for game object we can see in the summary it's got a transform now understanding which variable types you need to use and which scenarios can be a very complex question because a lot of the times it's very easy to just refer to the game object and from there find everything that you need because anything that you're going to be referencing is going to have to be on a game object well that means that you're making variables for game objects while you might only be interested in accessing the transform to begin with and the same with if you're only interested in tracking something's position you don't need to make a full transform variable a vector 3 or a vector 2 if you're making a 2d game will do but those are things that will become more apparent as you just play around and experiment with coding your own things once you understand the way that these variable types can have multiple bits of information inside of it that's the most important takeaway from this video i'm not going to go over every single variable type that you can find in unity because there's a lot of them and every single one of those variable types then has a lot of potential information inside of it so if you ever want to know something unity has very good documentation on everything that is accessible to you as a game programmer as a game designer so just don't be afraid to look it up well this has been rather information dense uh next time we're going to go into another thing that is decently information dense uh but it should be a little bit more applicable to the actual game and that is using all the information that we understand now we understand understand variables quite a bit better than we did at the beginning of this video and making something even more powerful out of it because right now we can reference one variable but what if i told you that through doing something very simple we can change this vector 2 direction into a whole bunch of vector 2s next time we're going to be talking about arrays and lists but until then subscribing and stuff and thanks to my patrons, you can see them on screen right now and a special thank you to my cave digger tier patreon syntax.